At the turn of the century, the peace in Cyprus seemed elusive. But in 2002, a new proposal brought both sides to the negotiating table again. The UN Secretary General Kofi Annan proposed a concrete reunification plan, better known as the Annan Plan. In the 1990s, following the fall of the Soviet Union, the U.S. encouraged European integration. Part of this policy was the enlargement of the European Union. Both Washington and Brussels wanted a united Cyprus become a member of the EU. For this, the parties in Cyprus had to agree on a settlement. But the problem was, no one on the island was ready for a settlement. Since 1974, two communities had little contact. The Turkish side went its own way and declared its independence in 1983, while the Greek Cypriot side was making headways in the international arena. Whenever we see an effort to take the Cyprus problem out of Lefkosha, out of Nicosia, and take it to the United Nations or take it to other power brokers, we see that the Greek Cypriots have the advantage. So clearly, joining the European Union, especially with the fall of the Berlin Wall was perceived as a huge uh, initiative for the Greek Cypriots to change the dynamics on the island in their favor. In 1998, accession negotiations started between the European Union and the Greek Cypriot government, but the Turkish side was not on board. The process for EU membership was going on as if there is no impediment on the way. Uh, I see the impediment on the way. We are not going to submit. Uh, EU will be getting on its shoulders the Cyprus problem in a more exaggerated way. Turkey is not going to accept it. So EU-Turkish relations will be destroyed. Uh, in Cyprus, uh, new trouble will start. Uh, and I said I, it is my duty to talk to Mr. Kredis, to explain to him and to tell him that we are ready for a new partnership, but not for a Greek Cypriot unitary state. Despite criticisms from the Turkish Cypriots, the US Special Envoy for Cyprus, Richard Holbrook, pushed for EU accession. Well, I think it's a very positive thing. The United States strongly supported the addition of Cyprus to the, to the list of the countries that will be considered first. And the economy of Cyprus demonstrates clearly that Cyprus is ready for membership. Under U.S. and EU pressure, the parties in Cyprus started negotiations to see if they could reach a settlement to reunify the island in December 1999. I have come here with uh, the intention uh, to negotiate seriously. If the other side is prepared to do that, then I will become an optimist. If not, I will become a pessimist. The new process was initiated by then UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Under the proximity talks format, the sites were not meeting directly. It was the UN envoy Alvaro de Soto who acted as mediator between the two leaders, but his job would not be easy. To me, it was a, 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 an important challenge uh, because uh, the United Nations had uh, been conducting efforts uh, for almost 40 years and uh, without making significant progress beyond a few principles as to the general outline of a solution that were agreed in 1977 and confirmed in 1979. But uh, an opportunity seemed to arise. Uh, it had to do with the uh, project for enlargement, for a, a major enlargement of the European Union. Uh, and uh, Cyprus, uh, a little bit reluctantly, was invited to start negotiations by the European uh, Union, even though uh, Cyprus remained uh, divided. 
and uh, there was also an improvement in the general climate between Greece and Turkey, which helped, uh, under which uh, uh, certain understandings had been reached and uh, Greece was favorable to the idea of Turkey itself joining the European uh, Union. Well, my, my father's dearest wish was to see Cyprus reunited and he spent from, you know, he was first elected in 1993 uh, and uh, he left office in 2003 and his main, um, the main thrust of his 10 years of presidency was to try and get a solution of the Cyprus problem. And he believed that if Greece and Cyprus um, pushed for, um, uh, encouraged Turkey's um, access to the European Union, that this would be a very significant um, uh, factor in helping to get a solution of the Cyprus problem. The fundamental problem which maybe we all should have recognised, uh, was, was this, that the uh, Greek Cypriots had got very used to running their part of the country entirely by themselves. They had gained international recognition as, as the so-called legitimate government for the whole of the island. Any agreement by them for a bi-zonal, bi-communal parliament, whatever you called it, was going to involve a diminution, a dilution of their power, not only uh, in, in the north, uh, but in, in the south, fundamentally. Mr. Dengtash uh, did not hide his lack of enthusiasm about these talks. Uh, it had been his position for the previous three years that there should be no direct face-to-face -face talks between the Greek Cypriot leader and the Turkish Cypriot leader until the Greek Cypriot leader uh, clarified that he was uh, talking there as the leader of the Greek Cypriots only and that he did not represent the entirety of Cyprus itself. Their visions for unification didn't align. Turkish Cypriot President Rauf Denktaş was for a confederation, meaning recognition of two independent states on the island, not a federation. With this idea, he disagreed, told the Secretary General that uh, he did not like the direction in which the uh, talks uh, were headed, and so that he would uh, not continue to participate in talks. Full stop. And the Secretary General asked him to uh, reconsider, and I called on him and did the same, but there was no uh, uh, moving. It took uh, over a year for him to uh, revise his uh, opinion, and uh, he then wrote directly to Mr. Kleridis to propose face-to-face -face meetings. Despite the differences in December 2001, Denktash and Clerides agreed to continue negotiations. It was a slow business. Then it was a slow business also on the Turkish Cypriot side and in Turkey to get, after so many failures of previous attempts to negotiate a solution to the Cyprus problem, it was difficult to get people to make another big effort, but gradually they did. Turkish Cypriots used the talks as an opportunity to make sure that there were two sovereign authorities on the island. The process was continuing. Uh, we had to develop the ideas and develop, develop the legal arguments to be able to make sure that the Turkish Cypriots would, would be a sovereign equal in any possible settlement of the Cyprus issue. So our our struggle was to try to register the fact that in the Annan plan it would be 
the two existing states that would be going into the federal settlement. It would not be the communities. It would be the states going into the new federal partnership arrangement. There was also another push factor at play. In November 2002, AK Party won the general elections in Turkey and formed a majority government. The new Turkish leadership saw EU membership as the country's national priority. The Turkish Cypriot's accession to the European Union would also ease the way for Ankara. AK had won the elections and it was clear that the attitude of the uh, of AK was deeply at odds completely different from the uh, attitude of the previous government that had been in place uh, in Turkey they very much want I, I heard this personally from Mr Erdogan who told me that you know I have I have a goal, and my goal is the European Union, and I know that Cyprus is a problem. Biz şüphesiz ki Kıbrıs sorununun olduğunu biliyoruz ve bunu çözmekte biz kararlıyız. Ve bu konuda da Birleşmiş Milletler'in planını müzakere edilebilir bulduğumuzu daha baştan ifade ettik. Ve bunu müzakere edelim diyoruz. Müzakere edelim derken de Biz özveri gösterelim ama karşı taraf da özveri göstersin. Eğer tek taraflı bir özveri istenirse bu adil olmaz. These new political dynamics were promising and just two weeks after the elections in Turkey, the United Nations presented a comprehensive peace plan for Cyprus. The Anand plan was now on the table. Görüyorduk ki Türkiye'de çok istediği için bu anlaşmayı e, süreç ilerliyordu. Çünkü Türkiye'nin de rolü büyüktü. Türkiye buradaydı. Büyükelçisiyle, ekibiyle o ekiple birlikte çalıştık biz de. Ama neydi hedefimiz? Annan planını ne kadar bizi koruyan e, efendime söyleyeyim bize zarar vermesini engelleyen bir hale getirebilirsek ne kadar lehimize bir hale getirebilirsek onun için çalışıyorduk. The Anand plan was based on establishing a federal state with two constituent parts presided over by a rotating presidency. Turkish Cypriots would leave certain regions to the Greek Cypriots. The plan also included a limited right to return and freedom of movement for all Cypriots. Turkish and Greek troops on the island would be drawn down gradually. One thing they all agreed was that if there was going to be a settlement, it had to be all there written down. So the Anand plan basically was a serious attempt to get a full settlement, a constitutional settlement, settlement on security, a settlement on the economic aspects, settlement on territory and so on. UN Special Envoy Alvaro de Soto and his team had to come up with a plan which both sides could accept by the end of February 2003. So the atmosphere had improved. But of course there was a deadline that was uh, set. But uh, the interesting thing about it is that uh, it was, uh, it contained a variety of very difficult issues, the question of security, uh, the question of the geographical uh, distribution of land between the north and the south, between the Turkish Cypriots and the Greek Cypriots. Uh, the constitutional matters were a particular challenge and there were also a number of pending uh, problems uh, such as the uh, property that had been left behind in the north by Greek Cypriots and in the south by the Turkish Cypriots. 
The European Union wanted the whole process to be completed before Cyprus signed the accession treaty in April the same year. But the EU had already made it clear that Cyprus would be accepted as a member with or without the Turkish Cypriots. The lack of a firm clause linking the EU membership to a settlement would create a major obstacle in the way of an agreement. We stellen schlicht die Tatsache fest, dass im Falle des Ausbleibens einer Lösung der Zypern-Frage ein schwerwiegendes Hindernis für die türkischen europäischen Aspirationen entsteht. Das ist eine Tatsachenfeststellung, weiter nichts. Aber natürlich verschweige ich nicht, dass die Feststellung einer solchen Tatsache in einem solchen Strategiedokument eine politische Bedeutung hat. Und ich sage Ihnen auch, diese politische Botschaft, diese politische Bedeutung ist gewollt. Die Kommission wollte das deutlich machen, dass sie einen solchen politischen Zusammenhang sieht und damit die Türkei ermutigen, ihrerseits noch stärker initiativ zu werden, um die Zypern-Frage auf der Grundlage des Plans der Vereinten Nationen zu lösen. The Copenhagen Criteria and Agenda 2000 define the, the, the conditions for membership of the European Union. And they say that the state must have any, must not have any territorial disputes, must be democratic, must respect human rights. All these principles were not present in the case of the Brexit application. Uh, the, the Greek Cypriot state that had applied was not a lawful state because it has usurped a partnership state. It was imposing uh, inhuman restrictions on Turkish Cypriots, a violation of human rights. And it was undemocratic because it did not get the consent of the equal party in Cyprus to make an application to the European Union. It was undemocratic, violating human rights, and it was illegitimate. A change in the Greek Cypriot leadership in 2003 would further complicate the efforts. My father stood for re-election, even though um, he had actually said that he wouldn't stand again because of his age, but he said, Okay, I will stand again. I just want 18 months uh, to, to solve the Cyprus problem and then um, I will, um, I will uh, stand down. And uh, unfortunately, um, the political parties, particularly Agel, uh, would not accept this um, proposal. New President Tassos Papadopoulos was elected after a fierce campaign against Clerides. He argued that he would be able to secure a better deal over Cyprus. All the discussions on TV that I watched, and I think I watched most of them, were extremely confusing for people. Uh, everybody was saying his or her point of view and shouting at each other and interrupting each other. So I don't think people really had a clear picture about what the plan meant for them. And I think that um, they were again scared of the idea of change. Çünkü Papadopoulos görüşmek istemiyordu, herhangi bir çözüm istemiyordu. Onun istediği zaten elde edilmişti. O yüzden işi akamete sürüklemeye çalışıyordu. Seçimler sırasında Papadopoulos annan planını doğal olarak şeytanlaştırdı. Bu şeytanlaştırmaya diğer partiler de katıldı. Despite concerns, Turkish Cypriots were excited. They demonstrated in large numbers in support of the Anan plan. One of the things that struck us is that there was no expression of interest on the part of Greek Cypriots in general. We never got a request from, uh, I don't know, a gathering of Greek Cypriots in uh, Nicosia or Limassol or Paphos or anywhere else among the Greek Cypriots, except toward the end of a small band of uh, people who supported it, but uh, who seemed to be very lonely at that uh, time. In a show of goodwill, the Turkish Cypriot government decided to ease border restrictions in April 2003. 
For the first time in 30 years, Turkish and Greek Cypriots crossed the island's dividing green line. Bugüne kadar Kıbrıslı Rumlar zannediyordu ki her Kıbrıslı Türk'ün arkasında bir Türk askeri var ve Rumlarla koşup kucaklaşmasını engelliyor Türk askerleri. Bunun böyle olmadığını gördüler. Kıbrıslı Türklerin de bir ekonomik hayat olduğunu, siyasi duruşu olduğunu, e, zannedildiği gibi Türkiye ile bir çatışma halinde olmadığını vesaire gördüler, anladılar. Bu önemli bir şeydi tabii. O güne kadar bilinmeyen bir şeydi. And many Greek Cypriots went to the north as well. Because they they had not seen it. I mean an entire generation had gone by without their their seeing it. And in many places that they visit, they went to their houses, some of the Greek Cypriots, and they were welcomed there. This is very much a, a, in the hospitality tradition of uh, Turkish uh, Cypriots, who are always very gracious and, and, and kind. So there was a new dynamic, but we were running out of time. And so after this, uh, the end of the talks in 2003, the Secretary General uh, decided to end his efforts, interrupt his efforts, and he said, my efforts are over until and if both sides make it clear that they are totally prepared to bring this thing to a close in advance, in time to hold uh, separate, simultaneous referendums. The UN Secretary General Kofi Annan was frustrated over unsubstantial progress in the talks, but Ankara was determined to see it through to the end. I was given another position in the meantime to make clear that we weren't going to sit around and just wait for something to happen. And my office was closed down. Of course, I was given to a new position in the Western Sahara, and uh, I took it seriously, uh, of course. But I always kept an eye on what was going on in uh, Cyprus until uh, uh, it became clear that uh, Mr. Erdogan had uh, produced a, a consensus view within Turkey on the need for a solution to the Cyprus problem, and he asked the Secretary General to renew his uh, efforts. The two sides had already agreed on several issues, including the name of their shared country, the United Cyprus Republic. The home stretch was scheduled for March 2004 in Burgenstock, Switzerland. But Turkish Cypriot President Rauf Denktaş was skeptical. My father decided that he cannot accept this approach of the UN, filling in the guts uh, approach. He do not, he knows the Greek Cypriots very well, so he do not trust that the UN will approach both sides equally. And he decided that he will not go to, to Birgenstock. And again, I was in the middle between Ankara and uh, my father. I said, we cannot leave the uh, table empty. Someone should be there. Why don't you appoint a, a representative? I said, okay. You and uh, Talat will be co-representing myself. You have all the authority. After the final round of talks, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan presented his blueprint for the reunification of Cyprus. You now have before you a final text, reviewed and amended, and overnight and again today. I have written to each of you a letter outlining the procedure in order for separate simultaneous <coughs> referenda to be held on both sides in Cyprus on the 24th of April. And I hope for a reunited Cyprus to accede to the European Union on the 1st of May. Thank you. 
The Turkish side quickly endorsed the proposal, but the Greek side was not as enthusiastic. On April the 24th, 2004, Turkish and Greek Cypriots cast their votes in twin referendums. I was very, very hopeful in 2004. Um, my father, who was had just um, left the presidency in 2003, both he and myself and many other people, we campaigned um, actively uh, in the Greek Cypriot community for um, a vote of uh, yes, a yes vote for the uh, Anam plan. And we saw that uh, in the Turkish Cypriot community there was a big uh, movement to say yes. Um, th thousands of people were out on the streets demonstrating. I mean, we were saying how they would vote, how the Cypriots would vote. And then I asked myself, if I was Cypriot, how would I vote? So I took the Adan plan, I looked at it, etc. And I decided that I would vote against it. Why? Not for the reasons of the community relations. It was, it was quite good. But as a member of the European Union, the uh, Turkish representative could block decisions, uh, could, could block the position of Cyprus on agricultural matters in uh, the EU. I mean, uh, you have an agricultural meeting on serious agricultural uh, issues, and the Turkish representative could block the decision, which would create uh, problems to the, to the EU. So I said, no, for that reason, because I was very EU at that time, I'm not today. Uh, I said I would vote against it. That was my position. It was obvious on our side that uh, we were going to accept. Just before the referendum, I went to my father and said, it's obvious that uh, the Greek side will reject this plan. But to guarantee that, I believe if you come openly to the public and say that you accept this plan, it will be definite that the Greek Cypriots will uh, reject it. He said, my son, that is not the point I am trying to make. The world has not understood the problem of Cyprus clearly, because when they come to us, we say we want solution. When they go to the Greek Cypriot, they say they want solution. If in a referendum, both sides rejects, then they will understand that unless they treat the both sides equally, they will never find a solution. This is what I am aiming, he said, and he was very, very right. Now we can understand that much more clearly. The results were not surprising. While Turkish Cypriots voted in favor, Greek Cypriots overwhelmingly rejected the Anan plan. Because Papadopoulos was very television conversation. Referandum bugün olacak. Biz bir hafta sonra Avrupa Birliği'nde olacağız. Niye evet diyelim dedi. Çünkü Avrupa Birliği'ne katılım anlaşmasını imzalamıştı. Ee, dolayısıyla Rum tarafının Avrupa Birliği'nden atılması, Avrupa Birliği'nin o hantal yapısı içinde örneğin konseyin toplanıp Madem hayır deniniz, sizi Avrupa Birliği'ne alamayız diyemeyeceği belliydi. Uh, in retrospect, uh, we should have said uh, to our heads of government, we believe that we should defer uh, Greek Cypriots' membership until we have this sorted out. Because the only reason that, in my opinion, the uh, Greek Cypriots were ever motivated to be involved in negotiations uh, about a unified uh, island was because of the prospect of, of EU membership. Well, they, in the end, the Greek Cypriots got that without having to put anything on the table themselves. Ondan sonra da Avrupa Birliği oturun anlaşın diyor. Ya sen anlaşmanın köküne kibrit suyu dökmüşsün. Bu ne Avrupa Birliği ne de Birleşmiş Milletler Güvenlik Konseyi. 
Anlaşma, anlaştırma niyetinde olsaydı böyle davranmazdı. I don't know whether you have seen that declaration of uh, of Verheugen. Uh, that's he's the uh, commissioner of uh, for 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 enlargement of the European Union at that time, saying that I have, we have been deceived by the Greek Cypriot side. We we uh, allowed them to um, uh, continue with uh, the accession negotiations on the Greek Cypriot side and did not make settlement of the Cyprus a condition for accession against their promise that they would support the agreement, a, a UN-led agreement. And they have, they have cheated us, he said. I can still remember uh, the anger of fellow foreign ministers within the European Union and myself at the meeting of the General, uh, General Affairs Council, the Foreign Ministers Council, it was held on the 26th of April. 2004. The fact that I remember the date tells you that it's fixed in my brain. The people around the table, my foreign ministers, were so angry about the behaviour of the Greek Cypriots uh, and, and how this was basically, excuse my language, shafting uh, the Turkish Cypriots who'd done everything that they could uh, to uh, comply with the Annan plan. A week after the referendum, Cyprus became a full member of the European Union. The EU now had a member state with unresolved territorial disputes. When the Turkish Cypriots accepted the plan and Greeks didn't, promises were made. The isolations would be removed and the northern Cyprus would be integrated into the world. But over the last two decades, all these promises have been forgotten, and the Turkish Cypriots realized that they had no choice but to look for other options to protect their rights. <laughs>